See you coming, I had my goggles on. <laughs> Perhaps you can get it invisibly mended. It's an old pain of her bleeding trousers. <laughs> you can't stitch ashes together, can you? Wasn't valuable, was it? Not valuable. Do you know what that is? That is a genuine example of the English school of pre raphaelites that, that is a Burn Jones. Look at it. I've got more Burn than Jones now. <laughs> I could have been worth thousands, that could. That ain't no Burn Jones. It is. I can cover this signature. There it is. There. Go on. Look. Burn Jones. That's Bert Jones. <laughs> B-E-R-T. Bert. Oh. Well, I still could paint him. I could have got a tenner for it. Yeah, tenner, yeah. For the frame, man, you've still got that. That is besides the point. That could have been real. You are a menace, you are. To any decent art collection, you really are. You are a little savage. You, you could have sat Rome on your own, you could. Until the end, wouldn't have had a look in with you, mate. You were born in the wrong century. You could have swam across Europe with your blow lamp in your hand, destroying everything in your path. Accidents will happen. Accidents? You shortened the legs on my Chippendale armchair because it was too high for you. <laughs> it wasn't even for you. Well, you shouldn't have left it on the cart. I left it on the cart because I was taking it around to Savavis, knocking off four beautiful ball and claws and nailing on iron casters. That is criminal, that is. Oh, I like to move around when I'm sitting down. Well, you're going to get all the room to move around and you want soon because I'm, I'm moving all my collection out. I'm not leaving it here for you to destroy. As soon as I've got the conkers, <laughs> I'm going to open a shop of my own. An antique shop. I've always wanted to do that. Hey, that's a good idea. Make much better profits. Well, exactly. We'd have the advantage over all the West End dealers. Because we get the stuff straight from the source. I mean, the half an agus, he can't go around on an horse and cart, can he? <laughs> hey, how about this place? Oh, we'll keep this place going. We'll just sort out all the stuff. I mean, all the good stuff can go into the shop with me, and all the rubbish can stay in here with you. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Typically you, that is. Anyway, where's the money coming from? It takes a lot of money to open a shop. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm working towards. One of these days. You'll see. One of these days. Go stuff, you. <laughs> Hello? Harold? What? A customer. Look at him. He's not after any second-hand gas stoves, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, Harold, he looks a good touch. Will you go on me? Hmm? Oh, you go see him. I've done my stint for the day. I've got my cataloguing to do. Oh, yes. It's motion. <laughs> Onion pattern. Soft paste. First period. Uh, 1783. Check. Yes. Sir. See anything you fancy? Uh, no, not yet. Do you mind if I just browse around? Ah, help yourself. 
drunk going there, though. Well, why not? The horse is in there. She don't like strangers. You're liable to get a couple of hoofs up your Alice. <laughs> Was you looking for anything in particular? No, nothing in particular, but I know you chaps occasionally come across the odd piece that's a little out of your line, and I was just passing. Oh, and... you're in the trade, then? Well, yes, I'm a dealer. Scrap? <laughs> Antiques. Oh. Yeah, I thought you looked too much of a Jesse... Jesse <laughs> gent for a totter. Antiques? Yes. Ah, oh, you better see me partner. That's his department. Harold! One quick minute. Come out here! No, look, don't bother. I don't really think there's anything here that would interest me. Good afternoon. Partner. Uh, that's me son, Harold. What a fine-looking boy. <laughs> This gentleman is an antique dealer. Hi, oh, yes. How'd you do? Oh, what a strong grip you have. <laughs> very powerful. I'm sure your biceps are very well developed. Oh, well, you know how it is. You, you have to hump a lot of heavy gear about in this guy. <laughs> can I do anything for you? I'm sure you can. What actually did you have in mind? Well... That depends what you have to offer, doesn't it? <laughs> I can find my activities to the 16th and 17th century. Oh, yes. That is a lovely period. Oh, I'm so glad you agree. I think that after that, everything became so nasty, don't you think? Oh, definitely. Mm. I mean, all that heavy Hanoverian clobber they started making, <laughs> it's far too all night. Oh, it lost a lot of its simplicity. Oh, exactly. Oh, I mean, in my opinion, after Chippendale, they turned out a lot of old crap. <laughs> Quite. How rare to find a connoisseur in such unlikely surroundings. Oh, well, I've always been interested. It sort of rubs off on you in this business. Well, the only thing that rubs off on you. <laughs> well, then you do have the occasional thing passing through your hands. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I've just had a mice and plate pass right through my hands. <laughs> Cigarette. Oh, they're nice. Thank you. They're black. <laughs> yes, they're Russian. I have them made for me. You would never would one, I suppose. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Do try one. No, thanks. They make me cough me guts up something wrong. <laughs> yes, well, is it worth my while looking round under all this stuff? And I liked it to find anything, anything you might have overlooked. The odd Jacobean fire dog, Elizabethan wine goblets. Uh, no, I'm afraid we're right out of those at the moment. I pay extremely well for anything that interested me. You got some good stuff in the house, Harold. That's not good, it's too late. What are you talking about? It's only half past five. <laughs> the periods is too late. Well, anyway, here's my card. Timothy Stanhope. Oh, Stanhope. And you are? Oh, step Harold Steptoe, with an E. Oh, well, it's... <laughs> it's been extremely pleasant meeting you, and if you do come across anything, you will think of me, won't you? Yes, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, by the way, the number on the right is my home number. Any time. <laughs> Good afternoon. Cheerio. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. He fancies you. <laughs> you heard. He fancies you. That was a stupid. He's a poop. <laughs> He's not a poop. Of course he is, mate. The number on the right is my home number. <laughs> Any time. Everybody's a poop to you, ain't they? Anybody who dresses well, talks nice, a little bit of refinement, he's a poof! Well, he's <laughs> one. I'm telling you, I can smell him a mile off. Especially him. Look, look, that's aftershave lotion, that's all. Everybody wears aftershave lotion. I don't. Well, you ought to. <laughs> you especially. <laughs> he's a poof! I'm telling you. What a fine boy. He's as bent as a boomerang. <laughs> you ask him. Well, I'm not going to go around asking people things like that. Excuse me, my dad says you're a puff. <laughs> Have you any comments to make? Huh? Well, I'm warning you, that's all. I don't understand you. You've got on a brain. 
You've got puff mania. <laughs> Everybody on television is a puff. The announcers, the newsreaders, even the weathermen, they're all puffs. I'll mention a film star to you. What do you say? He's a puff. <laughs> How do you know? I mean, where do you get your information from? I'm not going to argue with you. He's an iron oof, and that's all there's to it. <laughs> you mark my words. He'll be back. I doubt that. There's nothing here he's after. That's what you think. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> She's here again. <laughs> Who is it? The girlfriend. I'll leave it out there for course. Getting a bit keen, isn't she? This is the third time she's been here this week. Well, don't keep calling him her. There's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> you better not keep her waiting. Oh, oh God. Hello, Harold. Hello. Uh, I haven't found anything for you yet. Oh, no, 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 no. That's quite all right. I didn't expect you to. The reason I popped around is that yesterday I came across some rather amusing re Italian Renaissance buttons. Oh, yes? And I recalled our most interesting conversation the other day about Florentine art and how keen you were on the period. Oh, well, I don't know all that much about oh, it. Oh, now, you are a very perceptive and cultured young man, Harold. Well, I'm always willing to learn. Oh, good. <laughs> well, anyway, I had these buttons made up into cufflinks, and I'd like you to have them. Oh, they're lovely. Oh. I don't know what size. Oh, well, don't say anything. It's my pleasure. Well, now, really, I must dash. I'm going to a charity midnight auction of all things. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, what are you doing tomorrow? Oh, out on the Orson cart, as usual. Coming <laughs> in tomorrow evening. Oh, uh, nothing, what? Well, I have two tickets for the Bolshoi Ballet. They're giving Diaghilev's Nutcracker again. <laughs> oh, really? And I wondered, if you're not absolutely stricken by the thought of ballet, whether you'd care to join me. I'd love to. <laughs> I like dancing. <laughs> you quite sure there's nothing in your book? Huh? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I've got no other engagement. Good. I'm completely free. Good. Well, I'll pick you up at eight. Oh, by the way, black tie. Why, well, somebody dead. <laughs> What's he laughing at? Oh, it's presents now, is it? What? What? Italian Renaissance cufflinks. That's a bit strong, isn't it? Sprat to catch a mackerel, that is. That's your dirty little mind again. This is one present from one connoisseur to another. One connoisseur to another. And what are you going to give him? Three and a half yards of lead pipe. In... <laughs> <laughs> I've got some of your shirt in here, in fancy. Look, I don't want to discuss it with you any further. You just wouldn't understand. As Lucretia Paul just said, to be evil, all things is evil. Timothy is up. Oh. It's Timothy now, is it? Mr. Stanhope is a very cultivated man. I could learn a lot from him. I bet you could. <laughs> but he's an expert. He knows all there is to know about antiques. It's going to be very useful for when I open my shop. He knows all about art and music and literature. And I want to know about them too. We're going to the ballet tomorrow night. But you always go down to the Skinner's Arms on Friday and have a go at Dolly Miller. She'd be expecting you. <laughs> then you'll have to tell her I've got another engagement, won't you? I mean, I can't build my life around a Skinner's Arms and Dolly Miller. There are broader horizons than hers. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. I'm going to the ballet with Timothy, and that's all there is to it. Ballet. Poof's football. <laughs> 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 What are you doing up there? You've been up in that bedroom for hours. <laughs> oh, blimey. What does he look like? 
You're not going out in the street dressed like that, are you? I bet you don't like it. I says it must be all right. <laughs> Did he buy that for you? No, he didn't. I bought it myself. Don't you worry, I'll pay my whack. <laughs> oh, I see you've got your handbag with you. <laughs> this is a gent's shoulder bag, missus. <laughs> It's to prevent any unsightly bulges in the trousers. <laughs> oh, the bag. Oh, stop it, Harold, before it's too late. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. Oh, for God's sake, Father, get on with your fromage. Stop fussing round me. I shall probably be home late tonight. Again? You've been out every night this week. Where are you going? It's my job business. I'm going out with Timothy, all right? <laughs> Harold, I am here to tell you that you'll get yourself talked about. Talked about by whom, pray? The neighbours, for a start. The neighbours? You, you don't think I'm seriously concerned with the tittle-tattle of the local petit bourgeoisie, do you? <laughs> I mean, what would they know of the beauty of the Homeric union between two cultured minds? Harold, you're on the turn. <laughs> I'm not on the turn! Look, will you try to realise that what Timothy and I have is, is a straightforward, aesthetic and platonic relationship? God blimey, just because he talks a little bit better than you. Yeah, and wears scent. He don't wear scent. He wears aftershave lotion. <laughs> He's a very cultivated and a cultured man. He might be a bit arty-crafty, but don't I say he's a puff? Does to me. Damn it, Mark, it's typical of you. I've said all I've got to say. Look, try to understand, Father. He's opened my mind to a world of beauty and refinement, which is unassailable by vile innuendo and coarse jests. <laughs> you don't even sound like Harold. And furthermore, before I get any more, I shall punch you straight in the throat. <laughs> uh, that's better. Harold, don't go out tonight. Stay in here home, home with me. No, I'm sorry, Father. I'm having dinner with Timmy. Dinner? Where? Round his flat, if you must know. Oh, no, Harold. Now, don't go round to his flat. <laughs> Ask him round here. I'll get some fish and chips. <laughs> and we'll use your mother's best fish knives. They're still in the box. But please, Harold, don't, don't go round to his flat. It's a trap. Look, it, it, it's a business dinner. It's, it's a working dinner, a business conference. He, 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 look, he's found some premises that's going to make a nice little shop for me. He's going to put the money up. The filthy swine. <laughs> He's doing me a favour. Yeah, and what's he getting out of it? He's getting a share of profits. That is always a straightforward business deal. Look, it's what we've always wanted. And you're included. No, not me, mate. I wouldn't touch a penny of his money. He's not going to get away with this. I'll have you made a ward of court. <laughs> I'll have the police on him for corrupting a minor. Peter, I'm 39 years old. <laughs> Please, stop it before it's too late. Come back to the straight and narrow. I saw Dolly Miller today. How uninteresting. Yes, she was asking for you. You'd be all right there. You was always keen on her, weren't you? Well, yes. In an animalistic sort of a way. But there was never any rapport of the intellect. Ah, oh, she's dim as a glowworm's armpit, she is. <laughs> no, that. But she's dead keen. Bring her up. Blow him out and go around and see, give Dolly a see in too. You'd feel much better. Look, I'm not interested in Dolly Miller. A whole new life's opening up before me. I'm not going to let it go. I've lived in ugliness long enough. Harold, be careful. I'm quite capable of looking after myself. Thank you very much. Here, put this in your handbag and if you try anything, hit him. For the last time. There's nothing wrong with Timmy. Now, with your approval, I shall go to my dinner. Harold, don't go on the bus wearing that. The skinheads will get you. <laughs> I've no intention of going on the bus ever again. Timmy's sending his chauffeur out to pick me up. Good night, Father. Don't wait up for me. <laughs> All right, go. I don't care. I know what's going to happen to you, mate. You're going to finish up in a drag show down the Skinner's arms. <laughs> and it was absolutely superb. What was it? 
<laughs> that was the Jardin de Vaux Menageur. Oh, yes, I thought it was. <laughs> it's beautiful. I wasn't too sure about the wine. Oh, your face was groundless. Now, the Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, 59, uh -huh. was a superb compliment to the uh, Jarret de... to the meat. Oh, I'm so glad. Only I'm not a great wine drinker myself. Oh, aren't you? No. Oh, that's something I can educate you on. Oh, oh yes. As Montan said, uh, a meal without wine is like a day without sunshine. Oh, was that Montan? I believe it was. Was either him or Fanny Credit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so hang on, hang on. You'll get me Brahms and List in a moment. <laughs> 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 yeah. About our little bit of business. I think we'll start what you've chosen. No, 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 not now, dear boy. We'll talk business later. Let us relax and enjoy ourselves. Now, help yourself to the Armagnac. I'll just go and get into something more comfortable. Make yourself... <laughs> Make yourself comfortable on the couch. Is it hot in here? Or is it me? It's hot. It's hot. It's yes, hot. I thought it was. I won't be a minute. <laughs> yes, right, right. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Oh. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Birmingham cut glass. Starbridge. <laughs> beautiful. That's Starbridge, 1893. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Don't you find it rather warm in here? No, no, no. No, look, uh, about a sight for the shop. These lights are rather harsh, don't you think? <laughs> you were saying? Yes. Uh, about, about a sight for, for the shop. You know, I'm still awfully hot. Feel my hand. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, how very clammy. <laughs> Why don't you take off your scarf and relax? Uh, no, no, no. I'd, I'd, I'd rather keep it on if you don't mind. I'm quite cold, actually. Are you? Now, watch it, mate. Oh, what's the matter? <laughs> no, no, nothing, honestly. It's, it's just nerves, you know. It's, it's the excitement, you know, with the shop and all that. You know, your hands are just as hot as mine. Exquisitely shaped hands you have for a man. Are they? I didn't look Oh, really. yes, it's the first thing I notice about people, their hands. Yours are exceptionally fine. Such sensitive fingers. Do you play the piano? <laughs> well, no, not really. I, I, I used to bash out a few tunes out of the old naffy, you know. That's... <laughs> Harold, you're nervous of me, aren't you? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're very tense. I'm not. You don't have to be frightened of me. I'm not going to hurt you. No, no. <laughs> Harold, I've grown very fond of you. You know that, don't you? Have you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's going late. I think I'm about to be going. Oh, no, it's early yet. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, Harold, don't go yet. You've only just arrived. You can't go yet. I think I'd better... Oh, no, please, Harold, don't go. I'm a very lonely man, Harold. Are you? Mm. Why well, you come down to the boozers? There's a load of us gets in there. We have our knees up, game of darts, and chat up a few birds. Oh, don't be silly. Who wants to go out looking for girls? No, I do. I can't get enough of them. The more, oh, the merrier. Harold, this is not like you. It is. You don't know me. But, Harold, what have I said? What have I done? Whatever it is, I apologise. Well, nothing. You ain't said nothing. Yes, but you're upset. I've offended you. No, I'm not. Good night. I'll see you. Oh, Harold. <laughs> we haven't talked about the shop. Well, I'll change my mind. I don't want no shop. Uh, nothing. Good night. Hello, hello. What are you doing here? Nothing, nothing. I'm, I'm absolutely innocent. No, nothing's happened. Oh, yes? What's your name? Uh, it's Arthur. Arthur Johnson. Oh, I'm from Liverpool. You know. I'll just come up for the, for the match, you know. I, I've got a train to, to catch. I must get back to the wife and kids. Excuse me. Hello, Edgar. You're home early.
To have you back where you've been long. Oh, what a night, what a night. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite right, Dad. She does fancy me. Get out. Do what? Your bags are packed. Take them and get out. You're no son of mine. What do you want about now? You stayed out all last night. Well, so what? I'm old enough, aren't I? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Did you... I don't understand you. I... We'll finish this later. Hello, Dolly. I can't stop. I'm just on my way to work. Oh, sure. Come and say like the old man. Oh. a minute. Hey, are you, uh, you know Dolly, don't you, Dad? Hello, Mr. Septo. Well? Here, Harold. This your handbag. Yeah, where'd you find it? You left it around my place last night. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> Here, you better keep it. It looks better on you. Oh, ta! Smashing! Here. Will I see you tonight? Yeah. Put your arm on the wimpy eye clock, all right? Great. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, you. Is that where you were? Round Jolly? Yeah, of course. Where do you think I was? Oh, Harold. Son. Welcome home. <laughs> You've made an old man very happy. Oh, God, that! Wait a minute. You, you don't think I'll spend the night around it? How dare you! <laughs> I could have been a thing like that! Oh. You have an evil little mind you must have! I could have think that! Your own son! I'm sorry, Harold. <laughs> round Dolly Millers, yes, eh? It's round Dolly Millers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you dirty little devil! <laughs> what kind of behaviour is that? It's disgusting. You wasn't brought up that way. Uh, uh, this may uh, be a permissive society, but not in this house. <laughs> you keep away from Dolly Miller. Just for God's sakes, will you make up your mind? You can't win in this house. Don't you walk away when I'm talking to you. I want you in here at 11 o'clock every night in future. Yes, Peter. Ah, you're not too young to, to get my belt across your backside. No, Peter. Your mother was a decent, respectable woman. Have some respect for her memory. Yes, Peter. Where are you going now? I'm going around the vets to be done, if you must know. <laughs> I'm not going to put up with this for the rest of my life. <laughs> you come back here!